All right. So today we're gonna to be talking to you guys about setting up some structure for fish. We're gonna do it with Christmas trees and I'm gonna make two artificial ones to show with you guys as well. First things first, gotta get some Christmas trees and they're in that mess over there that we already know it's got some wasps in it. So we're gonna time lapse you got time lapse for you guys with us getting all this mess out of here. There's also two pallets in here and I watched a guy make a kind of funky thing out of that. I might make a little funky thing out of the two of them if I can. I don't know if I can't, then we'll just do the the other artificial ones that I'm gonna show you. Other than that, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna time lapse this for you guys and we're gonna load them all up on that trailer over there. Catch you guys when we're done. All right guys, so that is all done. As you can see, strapped down. Had to deal with some wasps. There were a lot of them in there. How many were in there, Cody? Oh my God, there was like probably two nest pools at least. There was a lot of them. <laughs> they gone, we killed them all. Gonna move on. I've got a pile of them at my house too that are just as stunk in. I'm hoping we should have at least four or five trees, four or five trees to sink down and I'm gonna sink these all just about 20 yards casting. Look, they're still coming out of that tree. I don't even wanna stand next to the dang thing. <laughs> so we've moved away from the tree. They're still coming out of that thing, but we're gonna be about 20 yards away from my grandfather's dock and we're gonna sink them all out there in kind of a little bit of a line-ish to help attract out some more crappy and bait fish, brim, all that good stuff, which is then in turn gonna bring out some more catfish and some more bass that wanna eat those bad boys. So that's, that's what these are all about. That's what this is all about. So I'm gonna get into more depth on that in part two when we actually, or not even in part two, I'll get more in depth when we actually have the, we're gonna call artificial structure to real structure, I guess we'll call it. <laughs> the artificial structure to the real structure, which they'll both be real, it's just a matter of tree to plastic, but the limb structure to the plastic structure, I'll go into the, pluses and minuses of both when I do it. We have them both made. Once we're done with that, we'll go into that. But yeah, we're gonna sink them about 20 yards off my grandfather's dock, and then we're gonna sink some other ones in a different spot I don't exactly know where yet. We will catch you guys in my house. Dang wasps. We will catch you guys in my house when we grab the other trees. Peace. All right, we're back in my house. We've got the other trees unloaded. Now we've gotta get into this mess. I've got Maybe one Christmas tree in there and there ain't much left of it. We're gonna, all this needs to be cleaned up anyway. So we're just gonna see what we can get done with that. And uh, I'll let you guys watch us stumble around as we try to get that cleaned as well. Once we get that cleaned, then we're gonna head over here and we're gonna show you guys making the structure. As you can see, the penalties for waiting too long to get your Christmas trees. The guys are toast. I would have had two more, but I waited too long and they are termite food, toasted. So now they're gonna be fire. <laughs> but we got all that other mess out of there. We're gonna haul that off to the dump, clean up that spot that's been needing to be cleaned up for three years now. Oh, it's amazing what we can do when we put our mind to it. That stuff's gone, poofo. Corner will be cleaned up, wife will be happy, life can move on. As you guys can see, I got junk everywhere. My backyard is my trophy room to my tinkering. It's always full of junk, always full of junk. I'm always cleaning, I'm always bringing in new junk. It's what I do. But we're gonna get out there, we're gonna make that structure and clean up some of this junk. Make some of the wives happy, clean up some of the junk around the house, sink it in a lake, make some fish come out. We're gonna go into the pluses and minuses of each structure here in a minute. Let's get over and let's make some structure. Okay, so here we are. We've got our Christmas trees, We've got some cinder blocks, screws, and a drill. I watched a lot of methods on how to make it with the Christmas trees. The best way I found from looking it up was everybody was using the cinder blocks. So they're shoving it through the bottom and then they're fastening it to the cinder block in some way, shape, or form. Whether it be filling the cinder block with concrete to hold them in, whether it be using cable to tie it on, to tie it like through underneath to where it kind of holds them up to where they don't come out, 
or the easiest one I saw is the one I'm going to show you guys because it just it, it was the easiest and why complicate life so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our screws here or you can use a nail I just have a bunch of screws lying around because that's what I do for a life <laughs> so what we're going to do is then we're going to take our cinder block here well Thank you, Dill Hole. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do here, also our wood, forgot to mention that. Now we could use pressure treated, but I don't wanna get any chemicals in the water or things like that, so I'm gonna use stuff that's gonna kinda break down the best. As I was pointing out to you guys, we were gonna go into why, man, they're still flying out of that thing. <laughs> oh, no. Just chill, if you move all aggressive, they freak out. <laughs> So there's still wasps oh. flying out of this one tree as you guys saw from earlier. But uh, so the basic thing is um, with the natural ones, when the natural stuff gets in there, it starts breaking down and then that's what causes all the good stuff. So if that stuff breaking down cause, brings in the phytoplankton, the zooplankton, other little bugs and stuff that then want to come in and eat that stuff breaking down, obviously that's what the bait fish then feed on is that stuff breaking down. So and then with the bait fish coming in to feed on that, you then get your big fish, your catfish, your uh, your uh, your crappy, your big bass, all that good stuff. They then come in to eat on the bait fish that are showing up. So in all reality, go in with your real stuff like this, your brush that you've cut down, your Christmas trees, your things like that. In my eyes, are going to make a better structure just in the fact of that. That's what's going to call. That's what's going to attract more fish. It's. It, I just feel that'll attract more fish to you than your artificial one will. When we do the artificial one, I'll go into the pros and cons of the artificial one. The one con of this stuff, of doing it this way, is this stuff is going to eventually break down. So eventually we will no longer have a tree there. I mean, as I showed you with the one trees that were out here, they've already been termite food, they've broke down, there's nothing left of them. So eventually this stuff will break down. When you go artificial, you're going to have a lot more lastability out of that. You're going to have a fishing spot that's going to last a lot longer. But I, on the other hand, feel that the breaking down process is more natural, is going to cause you to have a more natural structure spot, is going to create better fishing. So let's get into it. So we're going to drag this guy in here. This is the guy. There we go. And we're going to take this guy here as I hit the camera, man. Try my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that in there. Put him. Now the tree can't get out of the cinder block. Now when we sink him, hopefully he'll sink standing straight up for us. A lot of guys will put flotations on the top. I don't feel where that's going to be necessary. At the end of the day, if they fall over, they fall over. Standing straight up is better, but if they fall over, they fall over. So there's one. Let's get these other ones done real quick. All right. In theory. You should stand up. Yeah. And myth busted. <laughs> now what the thing I'm hoping is once it's in the water, it's going to have a little more uh, buoyancy to it, if you will. Unless she's in the water, she'll uh, want to stand up a little better. Now, another thing I read is that you don't want them to be too dense. When they're too dense, obviously you can't have your stuff get in there. So we're gonna thin this one out a little bit. Oh, that thing came out fast, bro. 
There we go. Not get too carried away, but got some big pockets in it for it. And that guy will. And this guy over here will work for what he works wife. Works for. I said wife. Works for. But as you can see, we cut some holes in here for all that good stuff. We didn't get too carried away. Um now we're going to get into the artificial so we're going to clean these guys out of our way a little bit and we're going to set up the artificial ones for you okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to start on our artificial one we've got our cops here sorry my neighbor let the dogs out on me and now they're freaking because they don't keep track of their dogs five gallon bucket one inch drill bit on our drill here some concrete behind tony there normal concrete and then our piping the thing with the artificial ones, the one of the flaws of the artificial is obviously you're dropping plastic and things like that out in your fishing hole. You don't necessarily want to be polluting your fishing hole in that way, but we are doing it to attract fish. So we'll just call it a, a, a neutral. We'll just say it neutrals out. <laughs> now, the one flaw with this stuff as well is like I was saying with the reel, with the reel you get the decomposing which attracts in more and does all your good stuff there. Now the one nice thing about the artificial is you do have to risk snags that you can get on the tree. Whereas with these guys, as you can see, you can't get snags. Your, your lures will just kind of shoot right past them. Your chances of getting snagged on this stuff is very, very slim. I mean, this one's catching on a little bit, but as you can see, it just kind of goes around it. So it's not like you're going to get so snagged in it that you can't just pop it off kind of thing. So, we're gonna get into making these. We're gonna get into making these guys for you. Here in a second, we're gonna set up the pot. We're gonna set up the tripod slash let Tony get in on some angles. So we're gonna get in and get on that here in a minute. All right, guys, so we're gonna get into the artificial one for you now. So what we're basically gonna do is we've got a five gallon bucket here with a lid for them and some PVC piping. We're gonna drill some holes in the PVC piping and in the lids, have it sticking out the sides, sticking out the top which is then gonna attract our fish. We're gonna fill it up with concrete, which will allow it to sink any kind of concrete, just we all know how concrete is. Now the flaws and negatives of it, like we went over with the, art, with the real tree, is with the uh, artificial, obviously we're chunking plastic and concrete and stuff out into our lakes. Not always necessarily the best thing in the world, but it is to attract more fish and help fish have places to hide and grow and do all that good stuff. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, the, like we were saying, with the real ones, the one thing with the real ones is there is a higher chance of snagging. A positive with these guys is you can fish around these guys and you're not really going to get snagged on them. The hooks kind of just pop off of them. I mean, this one catches into it a little bit, but as you can see, it probably wouldn't be that hard to get it to pop off or jiggle it off if you were working with your lure. And plus, we're not going to yank in it. You're going to more be rolling around it like that. Then we've got our treble guys, which are more the ones you worry about getting snagged on. And as you can see, they do not get snagged on. You can just sit there and bounce right off of this thing like you want to do to attract those big guys in there that are kind of hanging out on the outside of what is going to be your structure. In fact, attracting in your bait fish. It's going to look like a little, little bait fishy trying to get out of there and they're going to love it and you're not going to have to worry about getting snagged as much. So that's your plus to your artificial. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get into it. So the biggest thing you're gonna do, and I'm just gonna show you guys a couple holes real quick, then we're gonna set it up on the tripod and we're gonna time lapse it for you guys, do a good time lapse. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna, one hole. Okay, well he's just gonna stay on there. Two hole. broke my top good thing we're gonna fill it up with concrete still <laughs> I'm not coming off all right so 
so without breaking your top Jill you some holes around I got one two three four five that's about how much I planned on planned on maybe six maybe we'll just throw one right here ah frick it five looks good then we're gonna do some in the sides like so and then we can stick our PVC piping in there so for our top one so that we still get some good height out of this thing yeah thank you so for our top one so we still get some good height out of it we're just gonna basically cut these guys in half so let me go grab my tape measure and pencil real quick and we'll get that done okay so these guys are 10 foot so we're at halfway marks about five so once we stick them in there, they'll be sticking about four foot tall, probably. I mean, they're still going to be sticking out of this. So yeah, we'll just say they're going to be about five foot tall, ultimately. So that's not bad. You can use whatever you want to cut them. This is what I have handy, so this is just what I'm going to use. So then, to give you guys an example, that'll stunk in there. Ah! <laughs> and once you put it up with concrete, obviously you can make them stay like so once you fill them with concrete. And then, what we'll probably do as well, to show you that, oh. There we go. What? And then we'll have something sticking out like so. And so, voila. So I can kind of show you what we did with this one yet because our concrete's not dry yet. We're gonna just shove them in here, work them down into that concrete, shove this guy in there really. Work him down into that concrete. Work them down into that concrete because that's what's gonna hold them in there. And then we added some water in there to help get everybody nice and wet. I'm actually going to add a little bit more. In here. We'll throw it down our pipes here. And there you go. But yeah, I mean, we just shoved these guys through. No random rhyme or reason to them. As you can see, some are sticking high, some are sticking a little short. I didn't want any one pipe to overly stick too far to where they wouldn't stand up straight, which is why some are short, because I just stuck them down until they hit the ground and left it at that. But this way we can attach a handle to these guys and we can just drop them down in that way. They're full of concrete. They've also got holes in them. So the water's gonna work its way in there, all that good stuff, and they'll sink down in. Like I was telling you guys, the nice thing about these is that your lures can't get caught on them and everything. Hopefully the time lapse came out, we'll have to check that out in editing. But like I said, I've I've already pretty I've already explained it all, guys. It is, this is probably the easiest homemade structure. It's not gonna be the cheapest, but it is the easiest. I mean, it took me it cost me 30 bucks in PVC. These guys were about a dollar or twenty a piece. It cost me about, and I bought 13 of them. That was enough to do five out of, of top of each one. For the and 13 then, pipes, the two buckets and two leaves, we got for like $33 at yes. Home Depot. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, the two buckets, all that good stuff. Yeah. The only thing I didn't buy is a sacrete. An 80 pound bag of sacrete is about $5. So let's say for $40, you can build these two guys here. Once again, not the cheapest thing, but definitely are real nice, work real well. You may even have more of this stuff laying around. I've seen guys use hose, garden hose for their side pieces, all kinds of stuff. So there's always cheaper ways to do it. And then here, as I was saying before, is our real structure. Here's how our real structure came out. One thing I learned about a little bit afterwards that I didn't show in the beginning is I actually twisted the cinder block sideways and it's actually allowing them to stand up on their own a whole lot better. I cleared them out a little bit. Like I was saying, you kind of want some big holes 
so your bigger brim bigger crappy can get in these bigger holes here so i mean you got little guys that can hang out here you got a bigger guy that can hang out here so there's everybody um we're gonna uh part two will be me out at the lake sinking these guys i'm gonna sink these guys right off of the dock so hopefully i can get good fishing back at my uh, grandfather's dock again and then the other ones we're gonna sink probably up the cove a little ways maybe out in a little bit of a deeper water spot to hopefully uh maybe attract some big old black crappie out there and stuff and we can go out and catch some big black crappie but um other than that we will check we will see you guys at the water